<laughs> you have to understand Jordan's rage for Matthew because when in his presence, Matthew insists to be carried like that. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. This show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Old Man Vin here at LGC Actual in beautiful downtown Athens, Georgia, slinging the bits in our little Linux powered studio, driving the SS Nightmare Train. That is Jordan Swang. Look at him. Mm -mm -mm. All the way from Canadia land, where it's probably snowing less, one might hope. It's muddy. Muddy. It's, it, it, it's that it, time it, of year. It, it, it's, it, it's deciding whether it's like, I'm raining. Actually, I'm snowing. Actually, I'm raining. <laughs> Fuck you, I'm snowing again. <laughs> and staying up late past his bedtime, coming to us all the way from the Oslo Britannia, one Pedro Mateus, together with you, watching us live on Twitch, Chat Realm Dynamic, helping us form the wrong button. Wrong button. Fuck you, Linus. <laughs> <laughs> wrong button. There we go. <laughs> Cocaine Voltron professionalism I, ladies and gentlemen it took us 502 episode, episodes to achieve this razor edge we're getting there <laughs> yeah. yeah let's listen our front end is fine our back end is a roam it's http 502 see let's, let's I go set you. up some mail servers <laughs> the, the prophecy <laughs> <laughs> so before we get going we'd like to play a little catch up possibly a little bit of mustard what's going on in each other's life organs i know i had it i had an adventure i talked about it in depth in the pre pre super shows and go back and listen to that if you're a patron but I had my first real boy experience because I had a piece of hardware come in for a, a video I'm working on and was pretty sure it was DOA, but really wanted to test it on um, Windows to make sure I could confirm it. And guess what? I don't have a Windows and my Windows tablet was like, I don't boot anymore. And I'm like, fuck you. I didn't like you anyway. <laughs> you know, in its defense, it was put in a box and I haven't seen it in a couple of years. So like, whatever. I had to make a Windows 10 USB thumb drive. And Pedro went right to it and was like, yeah, that, that's the one after an afternoon of trying everything else to make a... Uh, whoa, USB. Whoa, USB. Are we talking whoa, about that whoa on is Wednesday? Me. Yep, I'm going to be giving it a nice little golf clap and a pat on the back because be like, you actually worked. But yeah, Windows 10. I don't know how people... Maybe Windows 11 is better. Uh, I will just say this from an experience of like, I've seen screenshots and stuff of that after it got done installing. And of course I'm stalling it on a card with, you know, a fiber optic network card in it. And one just is like, I don't know what that is. Why? And I don't know how to get to things. Anyway, I managed to get it all set up, but yeah, no, I wouldn't n No. <laughs> Why? How do you run that day into day? I'm not saying that as like Linux is better ivory tower. I'm like, how would you put up with that bullshit? Like I couldn't figure out how to get to applications and Pedro's Pedro's like, well, you type it in. Like, what if I don't know the name of it, Pedro? <laughs> hmm. What if you need to install a font, Pedro? <laughs> what do you do then? And Windows my, is unusable. Dude, my, my adventures of getting to, cause the last time I actively had to tango with Windows, we we're talking like NT four ninety five, and I think 95 through what, like eight kind of stayed. And like I, could if left alone in a reasonable amount of time get to a network manager to plug in a static ip address because this glue munching king operating system couldn't manage dhcp handshake uh, so yeah i finally got there i find i it finally kept on shouting at me cortana was like fuck you fuck <laughs> you i can tell you're linux i finally clicked on it enough to it popped up but i wouldn't do that to myself more power to your brave soldiers out there running your windows 10 Jordan, you've been too busy to run Windows 10. I'm too busy to do most things uh, this week. I did. I did manage to go to Costco, and I, one of the, one of the things I bought there was 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 a new shower head because you know the one I have in my bathroom. Did you get a fancy is, one? Is real bad. Uh, yeah, it's it's like it has a it has like a five or six like adjustable settings. The mm -hmm. the the pressure the pressure is really nice. Funny story though, while we were checking out, I was with my girlfriend, uh, and the 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 cashier scanning the items, and uh, my girlfriend tells me this later. She gets uh, she gets pulled aside by the cashier. And she gets told, that's a very good shower head. <laughs> <laughs> Little creepy. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, I, I, I now know something about this Costco employee's personal life. Uh, I don't know. Uh, oh, no, to, no. to, to her credit, she was right. It's a good shower head. But you, she, she should come back in with a neck brace and like an arm sling with a return. Right? <laughs> 
It's a yeah, really it's a little, show red. <laughs> little, little, little too powerful for me. Thank you. Fucking <laughs> awesome. How about uh, you, Pedro Steam Deck Boy Mateus? Play it. Did you take a break from Elden Ring? <laughs> To, uh, I did, uh, just because I've, I think I've now done everything that I can in one playthrough, so I've been trying, I've just been downloading a bunch of games, trying them, see if they work, and then, okay, that works, go away, downloading some more, trying them, uh, it's, it's surprising, like, some of the games, um, I was posting yesterday about uh, Kingdoms of Amalur, the re-release, uh, and Strider's like, oh. PS2 games. It's PS3, but you know. <laughs> but yeah, it on high with the uh, the high preset, 60 FPS on the Steam Deck. Oh, oh, this is a, how actually ma- a very nice. How experience. long does it you last? Might stay installed. How um, long does it last? Though? If you, uh, yeah, if you leave it at 60, you get like uh, slightly under two hours. <laughs> 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 yeah, that, that, well, but on, at 30, on, you on. get like three. Ish. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to say like slightly less than two hours. It sounds like some margin. Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> you, yeah, you could like, easily what, just what, bring the hour, graphics down minutes. a little bit. <laughs> well, I saw. But that. yeah, no. Uh, lock it at thirty always. <laughs> that seems to be the go to. Uh, something that will never ever be able to run at thirty FPS. However, is our horse. I mean, it's like it's like one of those like uh, fans that matches the shutter, so you just see the horse image, it's just like at, 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 at just <laughs> static floating horse at high frame rates. It's the Steam Linux. So maybe and, uh, uh, maybe this will fix your your problems with uh, battery life with Kingdoms of Mavalor. Maybe. Well, <laughs> the I think a bigger battery would fix those, but yeah, it is. Uh, there's a new uh, deck client update, so if you are still running the original uh, SteamOS image that it came with, you get this update in the stable channel. It uh, adds the dual trackpad typing. Uh, it's uh, very, very welcome actually being able to use the areolas to type like you did in the Steam controller. That's very much appreciated. They also brought the new uh, fancy keyboard to the desktop version, which too is very appreciated because the original one didn't have any control keys or any alt keys. It still doesn't have the function keys, but yeah, for like just control and alt are very, very useful to have. Valve, thank you. Uh, the And yeah, the, this is the update that you want. If you've been tracking the beta channel, you might want to put you know, the brakes on that and good to stable a little bit. I'll get to that in a second. <laughs> I, I was actually surprised that the uh, the software keyboard shipped without working with uh, the dual areolas because that was kind of the point. That was like the big selling yeah. point of the on-screen <laughs> keyboard uh, back on the uh, big picture mode days when that was the new hotness. Um, but yeah, have, have you have you have you alt f forward something with the on-screen keyboard, Pedro? That's the thing. There's no function. There's no function keys. Oh, right. when you said function key, I yeah. thought you meant like the FN FN key, not the. Yeah. No, 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 no. The, the actual F1 through F12 are not there. Uh-huh. <laughs> ah, ooh, <laughs> fix fix that valve. What about the latest OS beta? Ooh, yeah, no. See the latest OS beta. There's probably a reason that they moved the uh, channel selection thing to at the very bottom of the system settings menu, because well. If you look at the actual list, that looks very nice. It, the listed improvements are awesome. It's like um, messaging when a charger doesn't meet the minimum requirements, uncap frame rate if you want to completely uncap it. They added FTPM hey, support for hey, the Pedro, BIOS. You, 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 you're, yeah, you're sleeping on it. Uh, Windows 11 can now be installed on your Steam Deck without having to hack yes. Windows. There's <laughs> software uh, TPM. That's what but more importantly right? than that... They also added uh, support to boot off of certain SD cards because, as a lot of people found out, if you inserted some kind of SD cards like the one I have, uh, you would get four error messages when you were booting the system because the BIOS looked at the SD card and went, I don't know what that is. I'm scared. (laughs) So, uh, yeah. So I saw the old the update and I'm like, oh, yeah, I want more stability. I want better uh, idle battery life. I want all that. 15 minutes and two forced shutdowns later, I was back on the stable branch because half of my games wouldn't launch. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess yeah, we should it, say that. I mean, bad. this is opt-in though, right? 
So yeah, it is. <laughs> there, 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 there's someone else on Twitter who opted in. They're like, yeah, I know the, the, the idle power consumption uh, stuff is actually is legit. It's actually lasting a lot longer and it's not doing anything. Mm. It's, I, 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 I guess that that's, it can't play games. And so it uses less battery. <laughs> play how that works. Like, yes. Valve and rightly so is doing a big focus on squeezing as much power as they can out of the steam oh, yeah. deck, because that's what, reviewers and i have even heard people you know people who rely solely on reviewers for the information and they're like hey the battery life on your x86 console is handheld yeah yeah it it Mm -hmm. doesn't last like a billion hours because you know it's portable and it's got a screen and all that fun stuff you know generally people bad at maths believe it should run 11 (laughs) hours however when it's like two hours i'm like yeah that checks out like well, mentally in my head running current day game current gen game at high yeah the, the, yeah <laughs> they, they, they they compare it to the switch and everyone forgets that the switch doesn't even run at low it runs at the setting below low they shut mm-hmm. off all the fucking graphics features in order to like make that package even run the game well that's so the whole I, thing I, they well, yeah when you make a switch game from your pc game you make a different game yeah. Yes. Yes. You make, you, 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 a you really old stuff. Android version of when, your game. <laughs> when you get Witcher three on a Switch, everyone claps in amazement, going, "I don't know how you pulled it off." And then you see side by side, you're like, "Ah, that's how you pulled it off." Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's it's it's, it's seven twenty i. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Interlacing, <laughs> baby. Um, next. Oh, we got a new client. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you if you're on if you're one of those pathetic non Steam Deck owning people. You're stuck using just regular Steam on your Linux. Uh, there's a brand new client update. You can finally add non-Steam games that uh, have spaces in them, which is nice. Spaces and file names under Linux has always kind of been a pain point. I, I will I will freely admit that it's un- under Windows. Windows don't give a shit. Under under Linux, you gotta like escape it. You gotta put it in quotes. Sometimes you gotta escape mm-hmm. quotes. It, it's 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 a whole fucking thing. Uh, the other thing that's kind of neat now is that updating your driver shouldn't force a media precache refresh, which should hopefully get you. To, uh, back into your games faster after a rebort. Hmm. Yeah, uh, and the ability to, you know, uh, whenever you turn on your Steam Deck, not have it re-download all of the shaders for all of your games every single time. That's the that fun part. Though. You feel like it's doing something. You go take a break. <laughs> yeah, because you turn it on and the fan just cranks all the way up because the CPU is taking a hit. It's like, all right, okay. Uh, they're, they're, they're also working on some issues with like Steam cloud saves, like going in between Windows and uh, the Proton versions and the Linux versions. So uh, it's, it's good. It's good to see They're they're really putting in a lot of work into uh, cloud saves to make it a more advanced feature. And I, I appreciate it. Right. Like, it's nice to just have your fucking game saves wherever you go. Developers. Who yeah, don't yeah it absolutely save. is. And Pedro, if you've ever run into an issue with your Steam Deck and the fan noise, just put a pillow over it. <laughs> just put a pillow over your face for like. 70 to 80 minutes and yeah, you'll be fine. <laughs> Actually, one thing that I tried was the, um, those in-ear, uh, KZ, uh, earbuds, mm-hmm. plugged those into the deck, shoved them all the way in. It's like, oh, I can't actually hear the fan, even if I'm not, um, listening to anything. Okay. So I guess the fan is not that loud. All right. Cool. <laughs> well, one thing you might not have to worry about is, um, plugins. I'm kidding. Now you got to worry about them. There's a plugin manager yeah. for Steam OS, <laughs> and guess what? It comes with music and cheating. These are just two buttons. Speaking of somebody, charge your deck, son. Look at that. That is a uh, oh oh man, fucking R charge your battery. Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ, right? That, that stresses me out. <laughs> Pedro, it ha- is plugged in. I'll give him that. It's plugged Still, in. Still, Pedro, <laughs> how many nanoseconds of power is that? Like, have you let yours run that low? Have you even seen I it? I mean, yet? if you're just sitting in the UI, that's like an hour? There, maybe an hour? I don't know. Maybe. But uh, only okay. at 15 frames a second. So what is it? You never heard of it. It's a custom plugin manager injector for the Steam Deck, and it's doing it kind of in a clever way. Right, Pedro? Yeah, it, it's using, uh, because the Steam UI, for the most part, is the Chromium embedded framework. Mm-hmm. So it's using a lot of uh, CEF injection to allow you to add extra buttons to your Steam Deck. Uh, you need to enable developer mode, obviously. Uh, and to do say, it's like, okay, this uh, will, it, plugging this into any machine while developer mode is enabled is a security uh, risk, but only in the, in the sense that you have to have the physical device plugged in anyway, and if that is already the case, then there there's 
bigger uh, concerns that you need to be worried about. But this opens up a lot of possibilities. Using the cheat engine, just labeling that button cheat engine is like, did you have to do that? You're right, but- but you're 100% right. That should be called my training engine. <laughs> that, that should be called get good dot jpeg <laughs> yes <laughs> win for me dot button uh but it is oh no yeah, that'd be no, brilliant the, this you, hit, ex- you hit that it just launches game facts no. <laughs> <laughs> Th- this admittedly it does a very good job people look at that it's like wait so you could just run cheat engine from the overlay on the steam deck yeah, it it opens that kind of power. So I really and hope someone gets Fortnite one is going. Never for... coming to Steam OS. No, that's because of the custom kernels, Jordan. Uh, the uh, like do something like this, but for Discord or like some picture in picture stuff with the tubes, Twitch, Netflix, that could be very very helpful. Very mm-hmm. very useful. That's not going to be helpful for your battery though. That's for sure. It's gonna no, be... <laughs> Man, that's all well and good. But what if you wanted your Steam Deck to overpower the Australian Army? Ah, uh, well, then I got the software for you. It, so it is a chassis to convert your Steam Deck into a fully functioning battle emu. No, it's just a way to get emulators installed onto your Steam Deck. It's manual, to say the least. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, you uh, you have you have to, uh, at, for every emulator you want to use, you got to at least uh, launch it once. It's, it downloads everything in app image format, so you got to initialize it before, uh, oh, before the software step, can... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, seven. St- like, like I said, it's it's pretty manual. It's not. It's nothing too crazy. But again, it's it's a, it's a, it's a lot of work to get a bunch of extra emulators running on your deck, not through RetroArch. Um, if you are ideologically opposed to RetroArch for any number of reasons that apparently some people have talked about on our Discord, which you should join. Uh-huh. Something to Mark us on is. Twitch, twitch.tv <laughs> slash Linux Gamecast, patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. I'm running a business. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Technically, yes. But yeah, no. Um the words the brain. <laughs> yes. Uh, I was right, this is like the procedure, the uh clusterfuck of actually going through all of that um uh, install script. It it it's it, it deterred me. It's, <laughs> I don't play emulator games all that much. And it's like, oh, I'm going to set that up on the deck. And I looked up the install steps. Like, I'm not going to set that you up on the deck. I'm just going to use retro <laughs> you, you, you fucked up. If this would have been six easy steps, it would have like went in the, pr- the threshold for Pandora's fuck a meter. Like his laziness. <laughs> yes. Like seven. He's like, oh. Uh, yeah. But I mean, I mean, look, the, the, I could the, just the, use retro arch for the ones that I do play. So yeah, it's fine. <laughs> the, the the advantage is if like you're uh, it, it gives you some like better integration, yeah. takes care of some shortcut generation yes. stuff. But and, uh, being able to launch the games directly from the Steam UI instead of having to go into I think it's a neat project. Yeah, there's yeah. indeed. <laughs> However, it might be just a wee eclipsed by your next story. <laughs> A little is Pedro going to finally turn on his PlayStation? On Man, you know what? This could have <laughs> like one easy step and a like pirouette, but Pedro like couldn't be asked. No. I already installed Linux on that PS4 once. I know how it's done. And this, well, this very much follows along the same lines. And I had to double check the date that the thing was mm, posted on. It's like, is this here. an April Fool's yes. thing? <laughs> No, it wasn't. Uh, so yeah, Steam OS. The basically, it's the deck image with all of the deck stuff removed uh, on a PS4. That that's insane. But kudos. Uh, yeah, the um, the Guardian, as the author's name appears to be, <laughs> for uh, Wallalo.net. Uh, the yeah, they describe the like everything you can do. Uh, there are some known issues. Uh, the if you have a DualShock Four, because it's a PS4, obviously. Uh, the, uh, you're probably expecting the trackpad to be a trackpad, but if you've used Linux in the past, you know that that's a touchpad, a mouse effectively. So yeah, uh, the, um, Steam Deck UI sometimes doesn't open, so you need to kill it and start it again. Uh, sometimes you just run into a black screen, so you shift the, um, TTYs and you'll eventually lo- land on the right one. But Look yeah, the this. install... The install procedure is very much like doing any of the other Linuxes. You just 
put the payload on a USB drive and then go to a certain website, it loads the payload, it jailbreaks it, and then you can just get your Linux on, on an external SSD. So, Highly recommend so it. I- I, got, I gotta say, like the 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 Xenoverse two footage really impresses me because a that's a UE four game, b that's a Japanese game, UE four game, <laughs> c that was not even optimized for the platforms it was launched on. So the fact that on medium it can get sixty on a PS four, it's pretty fucking good. Pretty I think fucking all good. All this is very exciting. <laughs> we were talking about it again in the pre pre super shows, and uh, this uh, current generation of last year's console are all x eighty six based. So I think. Like the runway and the longevity of these things, the more they get hacked and cracked, is just going to be crazy because they are general compute. Yeah, they're very good uh, of like the Kabini Kaveri series um, APUs, but the GPU is still pretty good. It runs Vulkan, which is the important bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you have eight cores, not very powerful cores, but still eight cores. So, yeah. I, 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 I mean, hey, if you if you have a spare PS4 lying around... You can maybe do something with it instead of playing Bloodborne. <laughs> You're not going to play Bloodborne on a PS4. <laughs> That's crazy talk. <laughs> crazy talk. Well, let's, on, let's, Sony, let's talk about the green Steam army men. Man, you might want to step back and relax because we're talking about hypercharge, not regular hypercharge. Nay, this is hypercharged, unboxed, $15.99, on sale, 20% off, and they got a bit of announcement. Hey, we're coming to Linux. Native Linux support. And they're using Ooh. this, strangely, as a selling point, which I never thought I'd see this fuck mothering day show up, but strange times these indeed. And the developers sent us gang, gang of keys, so we got an extra key. Yeah. It is unreal. <laughs> could have had several extra keys. Could have had, but I, I, I did the right thing. <laughs> I did the right thing. And I'm like, we, we already got keys, man. Like, we don't need like extra bonus keys. If you want to send them, we'll give them out. We'll do some type of giveaway. But yeah, that, that's what really struck me. So let's take a look at the game itself. This is... Okay, here's what it really reminds... Oh, he's playing on the deck. Look at this. Oh, shit. Look at that. Oh, hey. Oh, shit. Running on the deck, son. You're getting creeped on. Old Netix. So <laughs> I immediately think of like the old Unreal type thing, you know, where you a little guy playing in a regular environment, and uh, that was mean, one mean of the greens. levels... And the Mean Greens was on an entire game, but there used to be that toy, like, no bathroom level in Unreal Tournament. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And all of the big map levels for Counter-Strike, too, yeah. <laughs> this thing looks the business. It You can shoot turtles on top of cars. It's a little bit of tower defense, a little bit of building, of course, uh, straight-up shooty, pew-pew, customizable characters. and um, Rip off of Fortnite UI, yeah. I, yeah, it looks very Fortnite-y, but then again, Unreal Engine. <laughs> right. I mean, it is Unreal Engine, man. There is a free demo if you want to go ahead and play around with it. And uh, let's see. DLC. What is it? Uh, soundtrack? Supporter pack? It's, All right. Uh, yeah, it's the soundtrack and some uh, cosmetics. Let's see. What does it require? I put it on the thread rope 1920X with a uh, 2060 1080p, man. This thing was screwed screaming with everything on cut up to 11 so and again it runs on the deck so why not no yeah, on uh <laughs> on the 3900x uh it was getting like 200 frames a second at 1080p with everything cranked up yeah it's pretty well optimized yeah. um yeah and, and i mean like it's it's good to see that like um developers are like oh hey steam deck maybe we want to opti- make an optimized build for it hopefully it's contagious yeah, I, yes. I, I would i would like to see <laughs> other developers take the hint this is kind of this is kind of like the big the big hope and we're seeing some baby steps, but we got to see some bigger mm-hmm. ones from some bigger boys. Yeah. Big kudos to a uh, Twitter person for sending us the extra key. So there'll be an away of give at some point, maybe. <laughs> we're gonna How put badly do you want it, Pedro? <laughs> <laughs> Couple of other things. Uh, speaking of new games, uh, Void Marauders. Yeah, no relation to Void Bastards, which I was a little mm. confused with, uh, but it's an early access. Uh, you can pick it up for about 12 bucks, which is very, very reasonable for uh, Steam early access. But it's uh, Space XCOM, um, the one or Space Pirate XCOM. Uh, you got your tactical grid uh, combat. Uh, one thing that's kind of interesting, apparently they're implementing like a bit of a nemesis system a la Shadow of Mordor. So if you like let dudes survive or like. Uh, or if you do well, there there'll be like a reputation thing. You can see from the the if you're watching the video version, this is basically just XCOM. They're ripping off the XCOM UI pretty oh, yeah. pretty directly. But 
And look, look, look at that XCOM uh, attack roll odds. Yeah, eighty percent miss, ninety nine percent miss. Yeah, so if you if you if you're uh, looking for some more uh, tactics stuff in space, I would give this a look. Um, it's in early access though, so it may change. But you can but loot and pillage across the stars. Uh, it looks <laughs> good. Do the stars know you're doing that? I don't know, man. For ten seventy nine, <laughs> I mean, look. If you like this type of game, you might want to play around with it. How's the uh, uh, single player only? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, this this is good for like lonely fun. You and I played XCOM yeah. against each other the one yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, we tried. Yeah. Uh, you, didn't we get like stuck in a wall or something? No, it just took forever for the turns to swap. Oh, that was it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, additional yeah. notes: product and development specs could vary slightly. You don't need much to run this. Uh, a one gig no. DX11 P- with P what PS3.0 for <laughs> support? The fuck's that? With PlayStation yeah, Three support, right? obviously. <laughs> you need you need to have a shader. playstation 3 plug shader 3.0 i don't know what the p is but um pixel shader pixel 3. Shader, 3. i don't know man i, I don't know <laughs> what the kids the use their street slang these days uh <laughs> I, i'm more chilled out man I, I prefer a puzzle game yeah so maybe you want to check out push sheep again nothing to do with pushing <laughs> again very 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 confusing <laughs> lots 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 of names that sound like other things that are different things uh but yeah uh, it is based on what this looks like it is steven's sheep yeet you are a sheep and you <laughs> gotta a ram, eat the other sheep i'm a ram <laughs> jackass yeah you gotta you gotta headbutt sheep off the uh off the uh platform and you know you gotta you gotta do it in grid manner yeah uh, it looks it looks fun enough. It's, mm, yeah, it has a free it, demo. And again, it's, t- it's a Shiko Ban Shipo Ban. <laughs> yeah, it's I mean. that block pushing puzzle for when you have the ice that you just start going in one direction and you only stop if you hit yeah. something. Someone looked at that and went, "Let's just make a whole game out of it." Right. Yeah. No, I'm 100 percent down yeah. with this man because yeah, I'm definitely getting some like Steven sausage roll vibes from this, like sweet, delicious. Sheep flavored yeah. sausage vibes. Oh, oh yeah, it's like oh, this game looks like it's gonna be fucking easy for babies, and then you hit that uh-uh. second puzzle. You're like, right. fuck. You get to level five, and you go, "Where's the skip button?" Look at this, gentlemen. This is what we're seeing more and more of, and I always want to applaud it. Demos. Let's bring yeah, buddy. Back demos. Let people try before they buy. So, what are we looking at? Eight ninety nine. Do we have any crazy moon glyphs for the requirements? No. Nine, nine sixty or better. This is reasonable. Five right. hundred series yeah. minimum. That's good. I think yeah. we jam on that. So let's see what do we have. Oh, game updates up next, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, the bi- f- the big one. <laughs> Fall guys has been demoted to bronze, <laughs> but. <laughs> This game was hyper popular uh, on Twitch for about 30 minutes and everyone forgot about it. But someone among us came out afterwards. Ah, and then everyone forgot (laughs) about that. Um, Andre Day has managed to get up on working. Andrade. With uh, some file manipulation. And uh, really, all you got to do is you get there's an easy anti cheat.so in there. You got to move it from one folder, pop it in another, and edit the game INI. Then you can start it up. And have my experience, which is just a blank loading screen, and it spins. It's pretty fucking awesome. I thought there was more to the game than that, but you know, I went through all the hoops, and there's even a bash script that will get you to that point. And you got to run Proton Super Extra Experimental, which it means you got to go into the experimental branch of the experimental branch of Proton. But uh, I did not receive any bacon. I tried it. Uh, like I, I quit dicking around with it when I realized it was like 24 minutes. How many of you have had this experience? You got like 40, 50, 60 minutes in a game and he never played it. <laughs> Just oh, yeah. trying that's, to get it up awesome. and running, trying to make it a good thing. Now, uh, Pedro, you hate it. You're <laughs> never going to play it. And um, I that's don't the know. Thing. I've already played it before it had EAC, but no, I went through the uh, rigmarole that uh, Andrade there is describing and it got to the screens like, oh, you have to either sign into your Epic account or um, create one and tie it in with your Linux, uh, with your Steam uh, account. Nope. I deliberately deleted my Epic account because I do not agree with what uh, Timmy is doing and just Epic in general just reeks of scum. So, yeah, no. I no. reeks of reeks, reeks of scum or the other thing <laughs> scum. 
Yeah, I, I, I mean, will not I, make assumptions as to what they're covering themselves. In. I don't know. I mean, like you, <laughs> I understand you got to hate Boner for Epic, but I don't have an issue having an Epic account. I know Jordan feels the same. Like we're free games. Yeah, sometimes I remember to yeah. go yoink those. Because, you know, that's no different than the Bethesda, EA, Ubi, or Squeenix games. Companies that have done infinitely more dodgy or shit a lot longer. Like, Epic's like a little child with a baby bottle compared to some of these guys. Uh, not on <laughs> Of the ones you listed, I only have a Bethesda account. And that was before they even had the Bethesda Net launcher. It was for uh, I only have. Online. I mean, do you <laughs> I want only a have prize? a Bethesda account <laughs> for, <laughs> what are you, for like an Wolfenstein? account login hipster? Like, oh my God, what are you? <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, we definitely um, have the Bethesda accounts because we had to play the Wolfenstein and we had to, yeah, it's never yeah. a good experience. Nobody ever wants to sign up and set up that extra. Yeah. And I ran into that with a game a couple of days ago. It might have been Squeenix. I'm like, what? I don't, I didn't even know you guys had accounts. Motherfuckers. <laughs> I don't care what operating system you're on. That's always a bad thing. Now, one good thing about the Steam Deck is getting rid of that fucking game launcher type bullshit, which I think is going to cut down on, oh, I launched the game. Oh, I need to go sign up for a thing. That's going to be a mm-hmm. hard note for a lot of people on portable. They're like, <laughs> fuck this. I'm there, there's probably yeah. going to be a lot more like <laughs> integration screens like, here, click this to link your account. I don't know. Based on what's going on with Fall Guys, it looks like they added the thing to the depot. Mm-hmm. Didn't actually set it up right or test it. Uh, and yeah, some people are like, Hey, we noticed the change. So oh, we can get the game to launch. I say, wait for the official announcement because we, we've seen like, uh, what was, what was the, what was the other game? Um, not, not vermin tied the other EOC game. That, um, uh, Apex. A, a, uh, yeah, I think, I think, I think it was Apex where, uh, people managed to get in, but they, it was the official, uh, Proton release that actually like turned that on. You just get away so. around for it. I mean, this is yeah. something, again, we were discussing for, and the pre, pre super chosen is I know a lot of these developers are probably not accustomed to having people crawl through their repos on steam. Yeah, and Welcome to Linux. Yeah. That's, that's going to happen. <laughs> I mean, they have encrypted repos. So I understand the people behind fall guys know how to do this. Uh, maybe if you don't want, but for all we know, for all we know, because let's talk about both sides, they could have done an easy anti-cheat, played around with it, set it up and went, nah, we don't want to fuck with this. I or, mean, I, I mean, shit also gets pushed to the main branch all the time because people don't actually like look at their release contents when they do like get branches. <laughs> that has happened. Yeah. What they need to do is look at their new ultra deluxe release dates. Oh man, yeah, Ultra Deluxe Edition. You know, now now that uh, I think enough time has organically passed where people have legitimately gotten the Go Outside achievement, the updates for Steve <laughs> for uh, Stanley Parable can finally start. Me and Ryan both yeah. did. We waited. Yeah, fucking calendar yeah, cheating, uh, bitches. Indeed. Uh, so, uh, updated version is coming out. There's going to be a bunch of new content, new challenges, new possibilities for you to fuck around and get fucked with with. Um, and apparently we're going to be getting, uh, we're going to be getting, uh, weekly updates, uh, as, as, uh, this gets closer and closer to release. So yeah, it's good to see. Um, Pedro, what is Stanley Parable? I've never heard of it. It is, well, like the um, comment at the start of that video was saying, uh, to describe it would be to spoil it, but it is very much a walking simulator with a very, very interesting narrative that you will probably want to play more than once to actually see just how unhinged it can get. Whatever, Pedro, I speed uh, yeah. ran this game in like seven minutes. Yes, you right, can do yeah. that. <laughs> That's just yeah, follow I, I mean, what the narrator is saying, basically. What? What, or don't what, walking simulator is a bit of a is a bit of a nis- misnomer because it implies a lack of interactivity that this game actually does have. Oh yeah, there's where you're plenty of interactivity, but it, it not in the traditional sense. Well, not just in the tr- traditional sense yeah. either. It's uh, it's a very it, different it's a game. game that does a very good job <laughs> of rewarding the fuck around and find out mentality. Yes. Yes. It, it it is a game that fucks with you and is expecting you to f- try to fuck back with it. And hundred percent. That 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 is that is the actual sport of the game, not not the not the gameplay itself. So yeah, and this is gonna be rolling out not just to Steam but to consoles and everybody else, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh Very they're coming uh for the Switch, the PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and the X series. Uh, so it, it's very nice to see like the the console versions actually bringing new stuff to the PC version. Mm-hmm. It's usually the other way around. Either we get a shitty uh, console port or the um, 
it's the PC version with the mods and everything that actually entices the developers to improve their console versions. <laughs> now, one last little bit before we get out of here is uh, if you're a certain age, there was some OG edge lording going on back in the gaming industry way back when, you know, in the 90s. And uh, a lot of those cats were at running with scissors. Do you remember Postal? Postal had people upset when that game came out, especially like Postal 2. There were protests about the game, which made it into the game. Jack, Jack Thompson, the, the lawyer that ever, the lawyer that all the gamers love to hate, uh, he mm-hmm. came out because he got really, really big because of Postal, yeah. Well, there's Postal 4, which I think like a lot of you at home when there was a Postal 3? Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe you. I've, I've never a little seen bit it. of a trailer. It looks like uh, they Kind of yeah. sticking with that same old engine, but hey, man, good on you, good on you. And Postal Four is leaving early access on four twenty. Yellow swag for Jesus, baby. To which Gtox TV writes, "Will it come to Linux after early access? You know, Linux, Postal Linux, they've gone together." So running with scissors writes in, "This is why we're bringing it up. It's possible since Wed like to get a native Linux build for Steam Deck. So, oh, right? I, I just like I got to be nice." Though. So it begins, gentlemen. But maybe, you know, I've talked about this and I'm not alone. The domino effect of rolling on somebody's got to get started with this. And, you know, it all depends on how successful the deck ends up being. It absolutely does when we see some real numbers because I know a lot of people are like, "Mm, we'll just wait and see. It could be a fad. But there is a timeline that does exist and it could be the one that we're currently in. It's just down the road a little bit. A timeline where developers will be doing legitimate, like, Deck builds like yes we maybe we need to squeeze out the extra performance like this and they're like hmm do we want to effectively remake the entire fuck mothering game put it on switch and hopefully get some traction or do we need to do <laughs> in some cases like tap that export button fam and um yeah <laughs> yeah put it on the steam deck I, I i i do have to ask though if if postal 4 is coming out on the deck we should know ahead of time how urine resistant the deck is because that mm-hmm. is a thing that happens in Postal. We got to make sure that this it's straight a little. It doesn't short out. <laughs> Pedro, can you comment? Yes. <laughs> no. Oh, that's a I have taken it to the Sad. bathroom, but I haven't pissed on it yet. I went back and played uh, a yeah. little bit of like. If, not when. <laughs> right? Uh, what was it? Postal 2. And it's like, man, if you if you want like the pinnacle of edgelordiness, OG edgelord shit, like it's there, man. It's got its, it's charm. Got, it's got the pissing button. Right. Using cats as a silencer. Yeah, yeah there's that too. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Well, coming up next, we're talking about our new favorite laptops that are coming out. And uh, Lutris gets a new release. Ooh. There's going to be news, or so I'm told. I'm not entirely sure what to believe anymore. But uh, we do believe in nothing. Uh, have, well, believe yes. in love. <laughs> That, that's a good way to go about life in general. Everlasting. <laughs> yes, listen to the darkness. It's it's actually not bad. Yeah. <laughs> well, Shut up, well, darkness. We're, but yeah. You're well, quit imprisoning you know, you know, me. You know, <laughs> listen, listen. We 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 we, we got to stop. If you want to help us actually afford the rights to some of these songs that we're quoting, <laughs> head on over to patreoncom slash Gamecast. Please, Metallica, don't sue us, Lars. I love you. I swear. Um, Far back. Yeah, pat- <laughs> patreoncom slash Gamecast. Uh, you get some cool stuff by signing up. Uh, you can get access to our Discord channel, which you can also get by uh, subbing to us on Twitch, Twitch.tv slash Gamecast. We got all sorts of neat stuff behind our Patreon paywall of Doom. Yeah, like uh, pre pre super shows and we got the access to the show notes. We got, we got early those. access to the to the interfacing Linux stuff that Factual Ben puts out. Statement. Uh, you can RSVP to the game streams that we're on. Ben does track mania. I do board games sometimes on on Thursdays. Mm. Lots of lots of you fun try. stuff. Try <laughs> and and then and then a forty five minute deployment takes until about eleven thirty at night, and it's like well. Shit. Oh, no, I, I really, I, I was able to join in that fantasy board game uh, with the tanks. That was pretty dope. Yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, some, <laughs> sometimes it, 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 it's, it's, it's a game to play when you're bored. Uh, but yeah, we, we got some, uh, we got some Patreons. We got to thank this week. We got to thank Andrew and Hakim who, uh, who uh, Pedro needs to come up with some new spicy, sexy facts about. <laughs> See, and June clearly cannot spell because it's not end June. It's a June. It starts with a consonant. 
So that's just uh, somebody's name, man. <laughs> Not Matt, anymore. Um, <laughs> Matt Eos. <laughs> Matt Eos. <laughs> Piotr Mitius. But, but yes. Uh, the uh, Hakim. Uh, Hakim, for some reason, that name really reminds me of Joaquin. <laughs> and uh, there's um, this re- really famous, um, well, ish, Hollywood actor, uh, which is Portuguese, first name Joaquin, uh, which uh, you may know as the one who played uh, Antonio Banderas's brother. Yeah, but I thought uh, in, you were going to play uh, Antonio so, so, Banderas. Yeah, so, so. So, yeah, so, 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 okay, so I'm, I'm going to stop you right there. Nobody, nobody knows who the fuck that is. We got a store. Store at LinksGameCast.com. Hang on, man. Shut the fuck <laughs> up. I also want to thank Basil for the resub. Oh, yeah, Basil. And, uh, yeah. Zeno. Yeah. Zeno increased Zeno. blood. Back. Zeno upped. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> He's ch- ch- chasing that tortoise with Achilles, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Store. <laughs> Store.linuxgamecast.com. Buy yourself some shirt. Buy your tortoise a shirt if you can catch them, but you can only go as far as they've gone the last time since they've moved. It's a whole fucking ordeal. Uh, you can maybe get some coffee cups to quench your thirst. Uh, some Insert Sisyphus joke here. Some stickers. I've, I'm running out of Greek mythology stuff to reference. Um, but, you know, it's it's good stuff. Good quality stuff. Um, the coffee mugs are great. The shirts are actually like decent quality. Uh, Don't try so to wear one of the coffee mugs. Wash. I mean, <laughs> you can I mean, try. You can try. If, yes. if, if you fit, if you fits, you sits. That's if you the general fit in rule. Any of the internet. Of this, send us a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. And of course, finally, we got we got the wish zones. If you go to Patreon or not Patreon, yes. just go to LinuxGameCast.com. Go to Patreon.com you again and to sign up with a different credit card. up with two Patreon accounts. I see what <laughs> right, you're Right, yeah. Too. Yeah, uh, head on over to LinuxGameCast.com. Put your mouse <laughs> over the support button. I got a wish zone. Ven has a wish zone. Jill has a wish zone. Pedro has a wish zone. If you buy Ven some stuff, you get your shiny name on the wall behind him. They're running low on space. There is hot real estate waiting for you, you with know what sexy I'm singles. He, I got to like spend half a day jerking off those fucking chalk markers, man. I mean, it's, right? a, it, it's a ceremony. Have, have, they, have, they, have they like all dried out yet? Do you need to buy a new pack? No, they, they don't. Here's the thing with chalk markers. The funniest thing I read. Thanks again, Mike. Mike was the one who picked up the support. Uh, but uh, the all the reviews are like, all the markers are dried out. They're bad. I'm like, they're chalk markers. You got to like jerk them off for 15 minutes, put them upside down, then tap them a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> then they work. That's how they function. Because you can just pipe all that. No, off. you just take the cap off. A cloud of uh, just chalk powder comes out. And you go. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, wait. Have have you sniffed the chalk markers, then? What are they? Smell no, like? man. But I've cleaned that shit <laughs> off various things. Like, ah, it's too much chalk. It's too powerful. Oh too man, powerful. But thanks for but letting yeah. us do this. You're awesome. It is a uh, pretty interesting times to be doing a Linux gaming show. That's for sure. Yes, there's actually stuff to talk about, like Intel GPUs <sighs> and how we're not we're, we're not getting them anytime soon. Here's our first look at Intel's Arc A series desktop GPU coming this summer. Intel shows off desktop Arc with a limited that thing we talked they, about. They last show you week. a render that yes. thing yeah. we talked <laughs> about last week. Here it is in all 50 seconds of whooshy 3D rendered bullshit glory. Uh, Jer- Intel, jerking you off. Yeah. Yep. So here's what we do know. Intel has confirmed that a limited edition Arc GPU will be coming this summer. Allegedly, GPU prices, I fear, will have normalized by then. So, I mean, nah, it's no dual axial. Dual axial, so they're not doing anything earth shattering. They didn't drill holes through it. There's not a spoiler on it, but it says Intel, it says Arc. And I don't see where you plug a power cord into that. So I have questions on that. But yeah, I mean, it's like standard, looks like there's only so many ways you can make a video card look like a video card. And that's definitely one of the ways. Um, but here's what I worry about because we've already seen, like we, I was taking a look. I always check it on my wish list. I use the wish list for like uh, stuff we get in the studio, but I also use it for price tracking because Amazon tells you like what something originally cost. And Jordan, you were looking at uh, the 3070s are starting to come they're, they're a little bit. 3060 out of TIs. Okay. <laughs> not, even, not even 3070s. <laughs> Seven, $748 Canadian. They're, they've the exited the exosphere the and they're kind of scraping into the stratosphere. And, yeah. um, you know, the 3060 is getting real close to like 400 bucks, which is still like 40 bucks more than the MSRP. But stock is no longer an issue right now. This is something a lot of people are not pointing out. If you want to pay that bullshit iron over, you can. I mean, you can pretty much go anywhere online. Like if I wanted a 3060, I could buy it. 3070, 3060 TI, they're available. Just 
more than what most people want to pay for them. This is what I'm thinking about though, man, because that means, because I've said multiple times, like all Intel had to do was compete on stock, having something in stock that people could just go buy in a store, be it online or in meat space. That's not the problem anymore. That's out of the equation. Something tells me that Intel really wanted to get these out earlier when like, fuck, I can't buy anything. It's like, hey, look, we have a thing. This is not the case anymore, which means, which means, ladies and gentlemen, the ARC is going to have to compete on price and performance. I don't know if that's where Intel really wanted this product to land, especially their first time out of the gate with something like this. However, you know, I'm still waiting. I'm waiting, but there's only one reason. And it's not because Intel has bothered to do us the service of saying, this is how much this thing's going to cost and this is when it's going to release <laughs> so I can actually like dial something in. Because I'm kind of that market. I'm not going to overpay for something. I can patient. I can wait. But they did mention the one thing that made me think maybe I'm going to wait regardless is it's going to have AV1 encoding, hardware encoding built into the card. Now, if you're a streamer or if you do media production, that got your attention, didn't it? Because it does. Now, AV1 for everyone else. You're talking about, like, you have HEVC, H265. It's a thing pretty much every video card, modern video card has, but you can't use it with OBS or anything like that because of licensing issues and nobody wants to touch it. That's why we're streaming with NV Encode X264 because that's not patent encumbered. However, AV1 and like the open source version, HEVC and, you know, price performance when you're talking about what it can deliver with the pixel organs into your eye holes at the bandwidth, it's right up there with HEVC. And this is going to be the first card to have hardware encoding support. And uh, they came out and said, hey, somebody has got to start this ball rolling, which they do. So you might have my attention on that. Plus for like deliverables and DaVinci Resolve or your YouTube videos, your uploading stuff, AV1 much smaller file size, but it took forever to encode on your CPU. So having that acceleration is kind of interesting. Gentlemen, what, what are your thoughts on this? Because I think all three of us are absolutely in the market for a new GPU. So sayeth for the past two years. Indeed. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't like, I, 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 I sat through their entire marketing spiel and it's all very well and good marketing spiel. I noticed they're very, very careful with the language that they use in terms of comparing performance to traditional compute units and without AI assisted workloads. And like the, the XESS stuff looks kind of neat. Uh, they say that's going to be open source, but you're probably still going to need the Intel hardware to do it. Um, the, 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 the AI crap, Sounds very interesting. I just want the numbers. Tell me how much this fucker is going to cost. Please. Yes. Please. Because <laughs> right, right, right now, right now it's like, oh, we're getting, we're getting laptops out. Laptops are great. If you like, you know, people are in the market for laptops. Not, not me though. I, I want the desktop part. I want to stick it in my, uh, my PCI hole. Yeah. The much like Ben and Jordan, I too want to know about the price because what I'm looking at right now are the prices for the 3060 Ti or the um, RX 6700, 6700 XT. So if Intel, by the time that I finally get done with uh, the fact that VKD 3D and my Pascal 1080 don't get along anymore, thanks NVIDIA, uh, the, yeah, if by around that time Intel has something equivalent out, I, I want to know what the price is because that's what I'm going to be paying for and this is what be they the have to one. compete on though man they have to <laughs> i don't think this is where intel wanted to be because now they got to compete on price performance instead of just general availability yeah. and in, 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 intel loves competing on price right they love being the cheapest option in the room <laughs> how long <laughs> it only took them how many years to catch up to rice <laughs> it it takes a long time to move that type of corporate ship around man it genuinely yeah. does like i think they this is a product they wanted to have out at the beginning of this year at the latest, but it's going to be interesting because they're not going to be able to charge a premium because there's going to be the initial hesitation. Like this is a new thing. This is a new product. You're going to, yeah. of course you're going to get the early adopters, but somebody how, like how me, much, how much of the delay do you think is like just working with these partners to try and get the stuff in to, to alleviate people's, it's uh, gotta people's be fears. a ton of things, man. Like there, there's no telling. 
So it's an entirely new product too. They probably had to yeah. create entire divisions to test the GPUs on top of the CPUs and everything else. And it, yeah, you know they're rolling Arc <laughs> out first, starting with their mobile, which makes sense. That's that's where they know Intel ships more freaking laptops than everyone else combined. Period. And yeah. yeah. So let, let things get hammered out there. Let, let people get a taste for it and see what's going on. And then we'll move into that. I mean, I want oh. one. If anybody at Intel is watching, you can call me. We'll have lunch. And um, yes. I got to wonder, though. We haven't seen a lot of uh, traction on the um, on the Intel driver side for Mesa. I wonder if we're going to get like a big dump coming uh, coming up as the uh, as the release gets closer. Is that what the- that 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 was that was the problem with uh, with the fifty seven hundred and sixty seven or with the fifty seven hundred when mm-hmm. it got released, right? Yes. There was Mesa like the the Mesa support and kernel support were all out of whack. So Nvidia or uh, Intel really needs to make sure that like the driver shit is well in place before this thing launches on desktop, especially for Linux at least. Well, for Windows, yeah. Well, I mean, shit. even AMD tried to do that like last minute. They're like, "Here's a commit. You want to shove all this in at one time?" <laughs> to which I'm going, "No." <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a few months as it gets trickled. I don't know. I don't know. I'm unfamiliar with Intel graphics on Linux to the point of it just always works with all my integrated graphics. And I've never tried to do anything beyond mm-hmm. like, Hey, it displays. That's good. That's all I expect from you. And, and, and that's kind of been it, right? Like right. it's all, it's all, it's all Mesa integrated. You don't got to do shit. So mm-hmm. and it yeah. doesn't even rely on um, blobs in the kernel. So yeah, the real open source drivers are Intel's. Mm-hmm. Weirdly enough. <laughs> so Pedro, tell us about handhelds in the year of his noodly appendage, 2022. Yes. Uh, apparently, uh, handhelds are very popular and a certain handheld that came out for a, well, let's say a very reasonable, very cheap, uh, price point. Stroke it. Was yes. The steam deck. Yes. <laughs> And of course, uh, there were already other um, handhelds rolling around. There was the INEO, there was the GPDs, and there was the 1X player. And the fine folks at VPC decided, eh, let's interview the VP of um, 1X player, Jason Zeng, and ask him what he thinks the future looks like and where the 1X player came from and uh, <laughs> how he feels about the Steam Deck. Uh, and yeah. He, I, I very much applaud uh, the uh, VP's um, talk here. Uh, Dude, I want to join the marketing to- team because, like, right, I could take that and be like one X player, angles and shit. <laughs> Kirby, <laughs> look, look, look at that ass. 140 degrees of ass. I mean, ass. <laughs> give or take. Yeah. But it is, uh, I want to applaud his, um, like, the way that he looks at the Steam Deck because. He says, look, the Steam Deck, it provides better performance than the One X player. And there was a ETA Prime uh, on YouTube, if you saw his video, comparing like the i7 one uh, to the Steam Deck. And at the same TDP, the Steam Deck was creaming it and even beat it at the 28 watt TDP. So it is, he recognizes that and recognizes the price uh, that Valve came in because Valve came in with a very aggressive pricing and a lot of people very much appreciated that. If you compare his words, which, you know, again, big kudos, uh, to GPD's attempted smear campaign of the deck. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, <laughs> if you want to pick one of the uh, other uh, competing uh, handhelds, maybe have a look at 1X, not GPD. But yeah, it is uh, of the ones that he actually brought up, all the other ones, and uh, like Embernick, he brought up Embernick. It's the only one competing on price because it is the cheapest handheld that you can get right now uh, is an Emberdeck. Of course, that's an Android phone from five years ago, literally, with just some controller boops attached Pedro, to it. Pedro, you fucking heathen, you just described the Nintendo Switch. Now, on to that <laughs> point. Um, yeah, I do believe like there's a chunk of people like into portable gaming. Nintendo has verified this with the Switch for the last, you know, five years. And maybe that Switch hardware doesn't necessarily cut it anymore, but you just got to live with it because Nintendo's like, the fuck are you going to do? Look, here's an OLED screen. Fuck off. Give us some money. That's kind of been the reality. So you're like, well, I my 720p-ish gaming at, uh, you know, fugly quality, whatever. Let's sell shade everything. We're Nintendo. Now, I, I like this take, though, 
because he, he said, you know, Valve Steam OS has also shown that Windows might not be the default OS for many of these devices for too much longer. And I'm going to say indeed on that. Like, this is, <laughs> it makes more sense. I mean, you even cut out the window. Have you, have you seen Windows on a Steam Deck? It's not pretty. <laughs> It's like when you look at just the power consumption uh, while playing a game on Windows, yeah, that's how you get better performance. The system is literally drawing more power. Mm. <laughs> yeah, magic. What's the battery uh, life on a Switch? So, uh, it depends on the game. I usually get about four average. Ish, I was five say hours. Four or five yeah, hours. Four or five hours ish. Yeah. All right. It so, d- depends again. It depends on the game, right? Like if I'm playing Disgaea or whatever, yeah. I'm going to get a little longer. If I'm playing like Breath of the Wild or Legends how often or are you out and about to the point where you can't plug your switch in? It doesn't leave my bathroom then. Okay. <laughs> now this is a very real thing that I want people to remember because battery life, battery life, battery life. Pedro, has that deck left your house? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> yet. Now, I, I have a reported sighting of a deck in the wild. If you can party with us this Tuesday, we do Trek Mania. We have a group get together and we stream it and you're welcome to join in. Uh, Rohit made it a point to bring his deck to a coffee shop to play Trek Mania. And he took it. We have verified proof that a deck does function outside of your house. But how bad was his internet? Because his internet's usually pretty bad. It, it was over Wi-Fi, well, but it was like not his Wi-Fi, so it worked. And, um, <laughs> it was it's, it's coffee shop Wi-Fi though, so that could go either Good way. Enough right? to play Trek Media, and I, I think that's something. People. Now the <laughs> price—that's what you got to compete against because Steam is these things are priced to sell five hundred bucks, four hundred bucks, and those and you know they, that, they learned their lesson from the Steam machines for sure. Like, those like thousand yeah. dollar gaming consoles, right. nobody bought that shit. No, yeah. No, what do you think about this though? I mean, because tell me right now, you would not immediately just insta buy a three hundred dollar Steam Cube. Yeah, the Steam, all the exact same hardware minus the screen and controllers. Like the desktop version. You yeah. just yeah. leave it on your desk, plug it into the monitor or two, and away you go. Yep. I'd get two. Shit, mm-hmm. for 300 bucks? Yeah. 300 bucks? Like that? Yeah, you're like, yeah, one to play the games on the other one to fuck with. Right. 100%. But we talked about installing Lutris on your deck. You can also install Lutris anywhere else, and you might want to take a look at this latest version. Yeah, release 510 is out. It has a bunch of stuff in here uh, as I pull up the notes. Uh, yeah, the Steam Deck support is improving. There's still no flat pack that is coming soon. And there was some kerfuffle on Twitter today about that. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> reg- regardless, if you want to use Lutris on your deck, uh, you're still going to need to uh, enable uh, read write mode, install it. Um, major updates may wipe it. Minor updates probably won't. They've confirmed that a couple of the minor OS updates hasn't wiped out uh, the Lutris install just yet. Humble integration is borked due to an API change on their end. So hopefully there will be a patch release soon. They added some CLI commands for browsing, uh, importing and exporting runners. Uh, there's an expanded add games to Lutris dialog that'll handle like uh, detecting games that are already installed. A bunch of our, a bunch of other runners. It's just a nicer inter- interface cleanup, which is always appreciated. Um, yeah. Um, and now, uh, part of the deck improvements is they've added a, uh, a tick box in the runner installer. So you can add a shortcut to steam, which will allow you to launch your Lutris games from the steam big picture UI, which is pretty fucking nice. Now I do want to point out this does require, as Jordan said, disabling the read only flag of your steam deck system drive. This probably shouldn't be an issue with the types of people who are installing fucking Lutris on their Steam Deck. So everyone needs to calm down on that. I mean, <laughs> let's just be real here. Yeah. Um, I, 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 went, I went through that thread before the show went live and like Strider has a point. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of talking down to users saying like, ah, you can't follow five fucking steps. You dumb, stupid fucks. Right. Uh, no. <laughs> well, no, I can't say that about Linux users. Otherwise, the uh, Fifi Brigade comes after you. Stop being toxic, Pedro. <laughs> You have a difference of opinion. I have to demonize you. Yes. You disagree with me. You're toxic. <laughs> um, here's the thing. Everyone just needs to grow the fuck up and have your own opinions. And that's cool. Valve thought about this. You can refresh your deck if you fuck it up. Can't you, Pedro? Yes. Yeah. How hard there, is there's that? There's a button that's just reset the factory. It's like, okay. Right. And, they get, if you, and if you really fuck it up, they give you a flash drive to do it. That just boots and does it. Yeah. So keep that in mind. Now, uh, major Steam OS upgrades. Uh, Jordan said they could reset the system partition. So that's something to watch out for. But again, you're the type of person who's going to put Lutris on your Steam Deck. 
you got this. I got faith. And in he you. D- and and he does say flat packs are coming soon. Uh, right. I, 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 I was I was chatting with him earlier about it. He's just not a big fan of the the setup there. I, I never asked him what specifically the issue is, but it's probably something. No, I mean, he, he's getting to terms with it. Like anytime you get a tangle with a new tech that you're not yeah. comfortable with, you, you're going to hate a lot of it. And so you get it <laughs> like I, I, yeah. I know those feels and I'm sure a lot of people at home do, too. EA and origin integration. I like that. And the option to enable battle. I anti cheat for the whatever ends up. Hey making that a thing it's literally a click not, button or slider not destiny thing. it's mm-hmm. very nice <laughs> not destiny too <laughs> no, not the indeed uh but you know maybe maybe you don't want to use lutris maybe you have an irrational hatred of the french maybe you could use bottles instead they have a new release out um it is uh 20 uh 2022 328 uh, you can have uh, environment recipes now. So they they have they before they had the um, gaming and application things uh, set presets for uh, set, configuring wine prefixes. Now you have a custom version as well. So if you want to mix and match your uh, features and flags, also handy dandy YAML format for exporting and sharing bottle configuration. The format seems pretty straightforward. It makes logical sense at least. You give it you give it a list of the dependencies. You give it a list of uh, tick boxes to set, and yeah. Away you go. Yeah, this YAML improved. install scripts like a certain um, Lutris client that we just talked about. <laughs> uh, someone I, Lutris, gonna, Lutris. <laughs> are you going to accuse Kubernetes of ripping off Lutris too? Because they also use YAML. You know what? Actually, no, I will for, accuse Kubernetes of ripping off Lutris <laughs> just to start more internet drama. <laughs> Fucking fight oh, me. Oh, <laughs> man. Uh, new CLI. That's been updated. Uh, Flatpak. All the, yeah, this is cool. I've never played with a uh, bottle. Have I? Okay, here's the real thing. I've never had a reason to. So, uh, but it, what, what's the advantage of this over, say, something like Lutris? Just a little more uh, focused is, on managing line prefixes. Yeah. That's that, that's kind of it. It's it's if if you want the tool to do one thing and one thing well without all the other crap, mm-hmm. use bottles. That's exactly it. <laughs> Big chunking change log on this. All this is going to be in our show notes on our web zone, linuxemcast.com under the show where it says under links in the show. In the show notes. At the in thing. the show notes on the show note things. All right. Blast from the past. This game, I used to, I, I've tried to get into this game like two or three times when in, in the dark ages before <laughs> BS before steam um, on Linux. And I just never could, but they got an update. They do. They also extremely lack screenshots on their page, which is first thought I had to. Right, right. When, 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 when you, when you are, when you, your project is a game, it helps to show people what your, what your game is. Right. The trailer, some screenshots. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just, just. All right. All right. As a community, Uh, we have a problem with this. Yes. Vegas, right. Not eight zero is out. It's been a fucking while. Uh, well, at least a year, uh, 2021 for not seven zero. They have, soft drop python 2 uh the builds they provide currently are using python 3 you can still build it with python 2 if you want to check out the git repo and do all that rigmarole yourself also because this project needs to maintain compatibility with debian sarge they need to provide two builds one for uh gl vendor neutral dispatch systems and ones for the systems that are too old mm. so shit is that it it, it- yeah, yeah, it's the, one of those games that it. I never really got into. <laughs> I was trying to find some images of it, man, but I mean, good, good, good luck. Yeah, look it up. They, the, 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 the devs can't fucking find any either. That's the problem. <laughs> in, in fairness, there's a galleries thing, but like all the gallery shots are old, oh, man. I know it looks different than that. Four by three. All right. <laughs> uh, good news, everyone. Uh, game engine, game maker, yeah. game game. What do we call it these days? <laughs> It, it's game maker studio or i guess just game maker 2022.3 because that, that that's the one but yeah the big one uh, there's the typical updates for uh the game maker if you've been building a game or if you've even been following wow. okay. uh, all right hang on let's let's go ahead and cover this 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 update brings a change to the product name Game Maker Studio mm-hmm. 2 is now game maker game maker studio was an evolution of the original game maker followed by game maker studio 2 a major improvement to the game. So you just went back to step one. Got it. Yes. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, they it's basically the, just undid Xbox. all of the naming changes and it's like, let's just call it's, it game it's, maker. It's the, it's the Titan. It's 
Oh man, which is fair. Yeah. <laughs> what did did, did did you guys get investment from Valve? Where you just like can't do the three? <laughs> Fuck this, got to go back. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think for something like this, that's just a game engine that it's just going to be game developers dealing with it. That's fine. Just call it Game Maker. Everyone already called it Game Maker anyway, so. I don't know. But yeah, the big one for us specifically is that now you uh, they changed the way that the um, libraries uh, are linked for Linux. You may remember that there was a bit of a snafu with the uh, just if you just exported the Linux version, uh, it wouldn't work out of the box if you put the game on Steam because it was looking in the wrong place for the wrong libraries. Mm. Now you can actually export two different Linux versions. You can export one that's actually tied to the Steam uh, runtime, which runs on the Steam Deck, uh, which is uh, Ubuntu based, according to them. That's not going to confuse anyone. But the other one is an app image. Which is the one you should be clicking. If you're going to be releasing your Game Maker game on Linux, hit that app image button, fam. Just mm-hmm. tap do it. that app. <laughs> tap that app dot image. Yeah, yes. CH model the things, baby. <laughs> That's good to see. Uh, yeah, because it seems like every time we run across a Game Maker, Game Maker not three. G- G- game Maker game. <laughs> yeah, game. And <laughs> more often. Uh, made than- game. More often than not, it always seems like there's some small amount of fuckery that has to be done to get everything up and working. Mm -hmm. So if this clears that up, I'm going to say good on that. So indeed coming up next, I hope you like dodge rolling because that's what we're (laughs) going to be doing a lot of taking a look at rejoinder. It's cult time. Nah, it's just cult for the chair position again. Cult. Cult, cult, cult. Yeah, it's not a cult. Diet cult. Hashtag, <laughs> hashtag absolutely a cult. It's that time of the show where we take a look at a game. We run it on some different distributions with identical hardware, pretty much. And then we uh, give it a hyper scientific, authoritative, um, truthful score based on one to four launchers uh, on how we feel. Uh, so this week we're taking a look at Rejoinder from Big Frog Studios done on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for about five bucks. What is it? Fight an army of skeletons and evil warriors. Collect coins, step raid your gear, defeat tough bosses in this roguelite with procedurally generated levels. And we got to thank Big Frog for sending us some keys over Curator Connect. Mm-hmm. So let's get into it. Ben, how'd it run on uh, Debian? All right. You forgot that three minutes or less of the bomb explodes. Three minutes or less. On Debian 11, 1920X Threadripper, 32 gigs of RAM, NVMe drive, and uh, 2060. Just enough to get it done. Everything worked out of the box. Menu navigation with the X clone was a bit wonky, but Pedro will touch on that. It is serviceable once you figure out the life hack. It can, as you might look at it. It can hold 60 at 2160p just, but frame pacing. It's kind of bad, no matter what resolution you hit it at. Windowed full screen options. That's what I like to see. And it's got a fugly slider where you can go from, wow, that's real blocky to that's blocky, but with better lighting. Now let's talk about the fun because I'm guessing procedurally generated levels is code for the stone with a circle and it kind of moves around a bit on different levels. So (laughs) yeah, that's the first thing I noticed. You know, I thought I was playing the same level over and over and over again until I realized that things kind of move around a little bit. So yeah, procedurally procedural generation, ladies and gentlemen, it's still a thing. It's light and kicking outside of that. You get a gaggle of characters to choose from some swing fast, others not so fast. And, uh, they all roll well enough, though. But now that we're done covering the entirety of the combat system, and quit laughing because I'm being serious. Uh, it's there are and, magic spells. Uh, Come on. Boop and roll, baby. That's what it is. You can boop with magic. You can boop with the sword. Normally, you're going to be doing booping with your pointy stick. Uh, no joke. Boop and roll would have been a more fitting name for this week's game. Because you do it. I mean, you boop a baddie. You roll away. Pray to flying spaghetti monster, machine gun Kelly, but with arrows doesn't show up because, you know, you have your regular archers. Then you have the ones that will just fucking oozy your ass down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's kind of fun. The two bosses. Uh, oh, OK, it's a nice if, damage, Pedro. Here's the thing, though. If you perform these two repetitive tasks enough times, you'll be rewarded with a boss battle. Two bosses uh, I was murked by were regular. Well, one was the archer, but with like super archer firepower. And the other one was like a big troll guy, Hulk smash. And um, granted, the archer boss 
you know, those fire arrows, a lot of them didn't end well for me. I, I got killed to death. And that was kind of an interesting little battle. But for four ninety nine, you can pick this up if you want to support the developer because that's really the only glowing thing I have to say about this. I mean, there's nothing like actually bad about this, but there's not much game here. And um, this has all been done before, and it's been done better at four ninety nine. It is a thing. I don't hate it, but you know, there's nothing there for me to love. I'll give it a two. Yeah, it uh, on uh, Fedora 35, 64-bit with the R9 3900X GTX 1080 Ti. Yeah, it launches out of the box, holds 60 at UHD. Uh, the loading screens don't fully black out the screen. It tries to like do this twisty thing, but then like Hangs there's a little bit of for a second. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, and you, you you can still see like the old level while the new one loads in. It's not not very very graceful with the loading screen. No Steam put Steam input working for me. I had to disable it, and with the DualShock 4, I got greeted, greeted with uh, Xbox glyph. So if that's going to be a problem for you, it may. Uh, the soundtrack is definitely there, but it's got the one track and it loops and it loops and it loops. Fun wise. Yeah, the game doesn't really have a lot going for it. Do it. You run around, you cheese bad guys, try to get a weapon that doesn't expose you to so much whiff punish that you get murder fucked by archers. And mm -hmm, that, that's, that's kind of it. Uh, you, you have a bunch of dudes you can play as, uh, dying resets you back to level zero, but you keep all your stuff in your upgrades and the enemies still scale for your level in gear. So, uh, di dying is just more of an inconvenience. You're just trying to see how long Did you say you murder go. fucked by archers, murder fucked by archers. Isn't that the sequel to men in tights? No, that's, that's, <laughs> uh, the, that's the next band that Britney slays did after unleash the archers. Um, but yeah, uh, anything with a range attack will just pepper you with fucking arrows. So you got to make sure that your re regen is high so you can tank stuff. Get out of the way or just hide behind like a post so they'll just shoot at you infinitely, but you can still reach them with your weapon if you have the axe or the katana. It's a thing. The core and like here, here, here's the thing. If the core gameplay isn't your crack, you're, you're going to get done with it after about 30 minutes. Also. Then brought it up. There needs to be more tiles for the levels. There are literally as many tiles available as there are like squares on the map. So everything just looks the fucking same. Uh, things will move around a little bit, especially that like floating island with like the yellow crystal thing that looks like it should absolutely fucking do something, but it doesn't. It never does. And it pisses me off. Um, yeah, it needs to be more varied environments. Like after after the boss fight, after the rock troll, I'm like, oh, are we going to get like a different set of levels? Nope. It's the same fucking one. Uh, yeah, you collect gold. You can upgrade your dude, uh, increase the regenerate. That's kind of it. You can find better weapons, better spells, and that's how you improve your dude. <sighs> I don't know. Maybe some online co-ops might liven things up a little bit. And here's the deal. It looks like a one person project and it's big frogs second, third. I don't, I don't know. This it came out this year, but he's got another game in early access that isn't released regardless. This is the dude's first crack at a uh, fighting at a, at a action game. So there's definitely room for improvement. Maybe rejoinder two will be better, but even for five 99, there's just not a lot of game here. I would say like, this is more 99 cent uh, area in terms of, uh, in terms of, you know, value. So one chair. Yeah, uh, over here on the Ryzen 7 3700X with the GTX 1080 or on the Steam Deck, it launched out of the box. It holds 60 on the deck at 1280 by 800, and it doesn't really seem to hold um, 144 at 2560 by 1440. Uh, it, it, it varies between like 110 and 170, so it, a little VSync wouldn't go amiss. But hey, uh, navigating the menus with the controller requires you to push right first, and then you can go up and down and see where you're actually selecting the things. That that took some figuring out. Uh, and when I tried to play it with the keyboard, I went into the options because I always go to the options to, okay, let's just rebind was to the directional arrows, and you can't rebind the controls. Minus one chair. And Seriously, what the fuck is going on with Unity? Did they remove uh, the option to let people rebind things if you're just using the free version of the editor? Because it's the second game in a row. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, as for the fun, it's not fun. Uh, it, it's bare bones, extra cores, roguelite um, arena brawler. It's Imagine the first Hand of Fate, uh, that style of combat, but with 
extra bullshit just to force you to learn that cheesing enemies isn't just a sound strategy. It's basically the only way to get through some of the fights. It's not a problem for me because I've played many bullshit games. Uh, and if you're a new game developer, you have a certain mechanic in mind. Focusing your entire game on, on it is probably a very good thing. And it's exactly what you should be doing, especially for your own edification, if nothing else. The problem here is, uh, try as I might with Rejoinder, the only thing that sticks out to me is the combat. And the combat is what happens when someone builds a combat system, just going off of how Ven usually describes Dark Souls combat. It, 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 it's that. <laughs> and... It, it it's boring and repetitive and look for four pounds. I'm not offended. I'm not. I, I just got bored after I figured out what you need to do. Oh, it's an archer. Okay. Lock on and do the slow circling around as you pelt them with magic. If you get close, smack them there. There you go. Yeah, no, I would have given it two chairs, but those controls not being able to rebind them. That gives you one chair. Bitch, explain to me how this is not one health flask away from Dark Souls combat. <laughs> There's parries in Dark Souls. And shit. Well, okay, yeah. that. Yeah, uh, Dark that. Souls actually has a very in-depth combat Th This system. is where we're at. Uh, in-depth, yes, parries. Um... <laughs> <laughs> attack yes, and there's roll. parries there's uh more than one magic spell yes there's attack and magic roll. spells that don't directly deal damage but actually make the fight significantly easier attack yes and roll. Our, 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 our rpg mechanics are difficult for vent to digest don't don't bother <laughs> yes um yeah I, I don't it's it's just a little too bare bones for me right like um the the the, the, the combat is okay it's serviceable at best um yeah, I, I think I think there there are there are better and more refined examples of this style of combat that I think the developer could maybe have taken a little more inspiration from. Again, I want to I want to see what Rejoinder Two looks like because this is the dude's first action game. Yeah, and for it five is bucks, clearly yeah. an attempt at something. It yeah. didn't work. But yeah, but you it know, was a constructive feedback. <laughs> mm -hmm. There you go. Uh, I think maybe you said it. You know, this reminds you of Hand of Fate, and to which I said, you know what. Hand of Fate 2 combat was pretty good. And Pedro was like, no. Hand of Fate. <laughs> Num number it one. It was basic. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, there it is. All right. Coming up next, you thought Pedro was long-winded. Oh, boy. A new challenger appears. Mm -hmm. The end is nigh. Uh, I don't know where else to go with that, but yeah, it, it, it's the end of the show. Um, you made it. Kudos. Or you click the things because you want to see what um, manner of hate mail people may have sent us. Well, stick around for that. If you'd like to contribute your own, by all means, uh, go to linksgamecast.com, hit the contact button. There's a form you got to fill. Just make sure you pick LGC Weekly uh, for the hate mail. Otherwise, you may send uh, Ven and Jill some feedback for the Wednesday show. Ask Jordan for relationship advice. And there's even um, some other categories. Yes. We got some other categories. We'd love to hear from you. If you got some thoughts, hints, allegations, things better left unsaid, we'd like to hear them. Might even read it out aloud on the show. And sometimes, sometimes if you put that little extra bit of effort in on a YouTube comment, well, we're going to have to talk about it. We're going to have to address it. And we got to thank Stephen, who went the extra mile. The a literal mile of text. He wore yeah. the fuck out of a thesaurus. <laughs> he, he, he rated so, every, every primary source for words he could. Yeah. Here's the thing. Here's the thing um, to uh, why we find this humorous as we do. To, to get you in the right mindset, uh, we had Matthew. Commandon, the creator of Lutris, on the show, what, two weeks ago? Yeah. yeah. And we talked yeah, to him. That's... We were just talking shit. We were talking shit beforehand. We talked shit afterhand, uh, as we do, because the four of us have known each other for over a decade, and um, we're always in and out. This is how we talk, because we know each other. There's a connection, probably. Um, I'm looking for something, so anybody want to vent for me? Fill, fill in. Oh, there we go. So, right. uh, <laughs> this... Thank you guys for covering for me. That was nice. Um, <laughs> Suffer. The biggest crux of this reply is that we were mean 
to Matthew, which is like, you don't know Matthew, do you? And, but laser focused <laughs> was Jordan, you're just being a big extra meanie to Matthew, which I immediately would just like to, what <laughs> I would like to respond with. Here's Jordan and Matthew. Now yeah. you have to understand <laughs> and empty. <laughs> you have to understand Jordan's rage for Matthew because when in his presence, Matthew insists to be carried like that. So that, that's going to grate on somebody. He does like being held like a small child, but who doesn't, right? Like right? it's soothing. It, 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 yeah, it appeals to that cuddles. atavistic urge of just wanting to be held. <laughs> okay. Again, thank you for this. We're, we're, we're going to look over, uh, stay tuned. If you're watching the video version, we'll put a link to the comment. If it's still there by the time we, uh, why we found this amusement because we fucking know <laughs> each other. This is just how we interact. Uh, but Pedro, did you see any gems out of this? <laughs> Look, it, it, I read the whole thing, and it, uh, after I was done reading it, so you could have literally Hang cut Hang five on. paragraphs I, I and I, just have. Let me the give one. you the taste of this. Hmm. <laughs> reading it, Stephen. My usual usual salutations would be j- salutations. The fuck salutations? salutation? Yeah, singular salutation. Not just a singular. <laughs> it's salutation. just the one. Yes. <laughs> now, despite my brain going. There's no need to read on beyond this. <laughs> oh man, it's it's it, it's it's a bit it's a bit of a journey. It is, bigger. yeah, and it's literally boils down to us talking over Strider, not letting him answer oh. any of the question. Uh, it's uh, did we really? <laughs> Apparently, Jordan was the worst offender out of the whole thing. <laughs> I don't. I, I was asking a lot of questions. Well, I thought I, I gave him his fair shake. I like I this. Why did you ask him on the show to be a foil for your Mo, Larry, and Curly? I, no, sorry, Mo, Larry, and Curly were likable. Uh, or to listen to him and learn from him. Man, we listened to him all during the week, baby. Uh, I do not <laughs> even say the benefit of interaction. But you're doing a intersection invasion. Da, 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 da. Uh, recuse myself from playing the low end of the pool again. Kitties, thank you. For your likely unkind attention. Oh, and by the way, I may be older. Now, this person goes over multiple times that they are, in fact, about how much older, older they are. Yes. Yeah. Because ah. that, that this was something I laughed at. Um, no offense, man. No offense. I'm not attacking the elderly, but you're like, I'm more than twice your age. You got to realize, like, in that four way, in that shot, two of those fuckers are 40 plus years old. Hi. So you're 80 years old, man. <laughs> I mean, if you're just double my age, you're 70. (laughs) I mean, uh, collectively we're older than him, and it is is the cocaine Voltron, right? I don't know. Then it's like the writing style is that of a teenage neckbeard, though. This is why I'm confused. Very very flowery prose. It it does feel like Homeboy here was trying to hit a word count. Uh, Maybe. Maybe. I guess in closing, um, I'm asserting that I do not like dumb arse behaviors, such as Jordan exhibits 100% of the time, by the way, to finish. A bit of elder advice to you boys. Punch up. Punch sideways. Situationally, but never punch down. Melvin Tolson, poet, uh, might just be listening. You may now delete me. To which, again, uh, <laughs> no. his name was uh, Melvin Tolson. <laughs> oh, this, this it, isn't it, it works better when, when you're reading it <laughs> over this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it just doesn't doesn't hit the same. When you're coming from like that spot of like, fuck, I didn't know they hung out in real life. <gasps> Oopsie noodles. <laughs> in real life on Discord the whole week. Yeah. 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 We're old <laughs> friends, man. Sorry you didn't. Uh, interesting take, though. Entertaining read. I want to commend you for putting the time and energy into that because fucking hilarious. <laughs> I still think one paragraph would have been enough. You could have been flowery That's as much as you wanted. Wall of text unnecessary. Come on. It was like reading a mini novella. Yeah. You know, I, I, I've read Shorter <laughs> really War and Peace chapters. A self-aggrandizing novella, but yes, sure. <laughs> hey, man, don't you make fun of the elderly. <laughs> you stop. As an elderly person. <laughs> These kids on the YouTubes. <laughs> Children. Children. <laughs> the baby. Yeah, as our 30-year-old baby of the show. Um, yeah. yeah. Th- th- 33? Shit. 33. Fuck. Yeah, you're getting there, man. <laughs>
in there. Fuck <laughs> hell. I'm turning to dust. Oh no. Oh man. That was fun. That is nice. Uh, that comment will be linked to the YouTube. If you might want to go read that, but <laughs> love it and love it and love it. And we, we'd never ever delete a gem like that. No, sir. That is. Oh, no. that, 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 goes, that goes on like the wall of fame. I'm, right. I'm going to put that, the entire like text, I'm going to have it engraved Brennan. on my tombstone. I'm going to die and people will have to read this entire thing whenever they walk past my tomb. Like, what the hell is written on here? Right? What? It's going to, what? Oh, man. oh man, we could, we could change some things around to be like the uh, Bender's tattoo on Fry's ass. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the time travel yes. code. <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry it will forever be immortalized in this particular episode on youtube so you don't have to worry about any additional edits or deletions it, we, we saved it for you my man we saved it for you but this one's all on you <laughs> ladies and gentlemen boys and girls we gotta bounce right the fuck up out of here if you want to get hold of me, I'm just at Vin Stone on Twitter doing the things. Old man Vin, I'm there. Mastodon, mass.linuxgamecast.com. Alternate social media for the true hipsters like myself. I am a dumb arse. You can see me doing dumb arse things at Twitter at the, the Burning Fool or on twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. <laughs> and apparently, as a non-native English speaker, I should know better than to talk over other people. Because I'm the one that talks over other people. Uh, the <laughs> best way to talk over me, if you'd like, is to go on Twitter. And uh, good luck sending some audio over that. I guess you could do a video. That works. Uh, at, at account at four. That, that, that's the way to get in touch. Have you ever... I still say we need Pedro, like, dubstep remix. Uh, now I want to try to feed fit, <laughs> fucking tweet fitter. Uh, Goddamn. Um, feed Twitter. <laughs> hey, um, wait a file. Tweet fitter? <laughs> tweet fitter, bitches. Tweet, hashtag tweet fitter. Credits. Show title. <laughs> Last week's credits, oh, but credits man. nonetheless. Man. Feeder well, five oh Twitter. We rendered it in time. <laughs> it did it's get rendered. End of Linux. <laughs> it's the Linux Gamecast <laughs> credit segment where we wait for stuff to scroll up. We got to thank our advisors, Omegas, our Theron. We got to thank our executive producers, Aldius Bar, Bram Scott Michaud, Mr. Fox Dog, Atomic Ass, Mike G, Mike T, Drummer, Kohaku, Yorjan, Febble, and our little Nicky fans, Darkwing, and Nixon's Pyramid Abstraction. And Sea Monsters, Jack B, Renault, Rider X, Machina, Trudgy, Verton, Nuda, Justin, Frostclaw, and Strider. With the Death Notes coming in as Nova, Basil, Chad, Romeo, Marson, System D, Craig, Renee, Leonardo, DeCrazy, Don't worry, future patrons, you'll be on Chris, next Steve week. Jill, I Ben-Turin, promise. Doom to Super Serial. Stephen B, Dirty Dean, Back, Michael Game of Tron, Dodgers, Anthurus, Gaming, Rue, Turnover, Jesus, I really gotta shout out ask Kai how, how, how you pronounce his new name. Zero zero B. Yeah, is, I, I, I assume Kidra. Frizo. Zeno. Minus nine. Pebble. Ziz. Oogie Wan. Felicio. Thomas T. Look at, look at, look at these fuckers. Fit as tweets for these shields, baby, like Carl, Mike, or Theron, Linux, Nero, Aldeus, Nicholas, John, E. Shept, and Game underscore Moog underscore Tron. Underscore, oh, yeah. underscore, underscore. And remember, kids, fitted tweets between the sheets. Yeah. Fitted, and fitted, apparently nothing is still not on the correct yeah. list. Oh, I well. don't know. As long, as long as there's a hole in the sheet, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Dying to fire everyone. We'll see you next week. Five dudes. <laughs>